Hello everyone, Dom here from Esports News UK. This is the final interview at MSI. I'm quite sad yeah. that, it's, that it's all <laughs> over, but what an exciting final series. And I'm joined by none other than Dagda, uh, Irish League of Legends <laughs> talent. You've done lots of casting, Dagda. But <laughs> to start with, what was it like being part of this broadcast? Because I feel like you've been a, a part of it for quite a number yeah. of days. Yeah, it's it's been super, super nice to be a part of it all. Um, especially kind of getting back towards, like I have family who came to, to see and everything. So being a bit closer to Ireland has been super nice. Um, but even just this, I love the new format. The fact that you get so many more closer best of fives, so many games feel like they've got more value to them. And even just the excitement that comes with them as well. Like JDG versus T-Wood by far, like one of my favorite games we had. It was absolutely insane. But yeah, it's been, it's been so nice to to get to not only be a part of like kind of the later portions as well but get to tell the story of a lot of the earlier teams as well because i think a lot of people kind of see them hit these international stages and don't realize the work and everything else they put into because they'll go up against a team like jdg or t1 and they kind of get crushed but now you actually get to see the the growth that these teams have and how they actually face the teams they're a bit more to their level yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and you know, you've obviously got that experience on the LPL English yeah. broadcast. I didn't know this, but shout about to Mu shout out to Munchables the other day because this oh, no. <laughs> apparently this is the first all Chinese all yeah. LPL international final, yeah. and that's interesting. You know, it, for you, you must have good knowledge of these teams. Yeah. Than the standard league fan or the non LPL <laughs> fan like myself, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I I like to think I do, but then I talk to people like Emily Rand, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm so far behind. But um, she is an encyclopedia. But no, seriously, like it's been really nice, and especially for like I'm a big JDG fan since I joined LPL in 2020. So to see kind of the stories of both the guys on JDG like Kanavi, who they kind of stuck with, but you know, three six nine and Knight moving across from top esports, and um, guys like On who replaced Sword Art after soon he lost the world. 2020 like there's so many of these little nuggets and stories that you get to see and even the players like elk who was jomong who we were like there's no way this guy's ever going to become a real carry he's like it's just not going to happen he's way too coin flippy he just goes nuts he's just way too aggressive look it's not going to happen and then you look at him you're like who's this <laughs> what happened like yeah so i think it's been really really cool to kind of get to not only like share the story, but enjoy that story as just a fan as well. Because these guys are so damn good at what they do. And it's just so nice to see when they do get to pop off and show what they are able to do internationally. Yeah, absolutely. China taking over London and I've got no complaints. You know, they put on an excellent show. And like you say, the T1 match was fantastic yesterday. I think Medic today on broadcast described the, the series today as the night show. Yeah. Would you agree? Who was your sort of picks of the, yeah. the final? Um, well, I was kind of joking. It was like Jace was the MVP, but at least Knight got him more often, so it kind of worked out. But uh, yeah, I think the the big show was both Kanavi and Knight. I think the fact that they were able to play so heavily through that mid jungle was absolutely insane. And um, obviously, Knight getting the finals MVP was nuts. But it was just, I think you really got to see how strong JDG are across the entire way. Um, like Kanavi's Wukong was absolutely nuts. I think it was in game one. You look at like game two, game three, four, or well, game three and four where Knight got to show off on the Annie and the Jaces and um, it really just felt like an even ruler and missing I'm so glad we got to see missing's thresh because this has been like a personal favorite of mine the entire time I was in the LPL and then you see that like passage of play right as they push up to the next and he hits like five hooks in a row I'm just so it's it's really really cool to see these guys and um, and again it's just like you kind of it's impossible not to become a fan of them when you've been casting them for three years when you've been like trying to learn their stories especially with the like there's a lot of guys like shout out to guys like Jest on Twitter and stuff like that who will are Chinese viewers that will like message us stories and stuff like that because obviously we can't translate a lot of the stories that come across and everything so um, there's like dedicated fans on the Chinese side who help us to do our job for the LPL as well so there's a lot of these guys that make the difference for us and like to be able to then have the like help us share the stories of these players which makes such a difference both to ourselves because at the end of the day like I love just telling a good yarn but like to see the guys now kind of that full circle coming in the story is just beautiful yeah 100% yeah. and um you know, I've been asking everyone this, Dagda, their favourite things about London. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing you've been here before, but, you know, what did you like? And we were also asking people their, their Nando's order of choice <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I'd say that, so I came over before to do, in 2019, I did a gig with Fnatic and I was out in Camden for the World's Finals viewing party. So, But I, outside of that, I actually haven't, like, I came over as a kid when I was, like, six, seven. So my only memory of London is the Rainforest Cafe and getting a tiger teddy bear. <laughs> that's the, ex that's the extent of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 
But uh, that was my memory of London. But now, obviously, it's a bit more fleshed out, or at least a bit more recent. Um, but I went to see the... Is it the show that goes wrong? Or the... the it's down in the West End, anyway. I went to see one of the plays. It's like a slapstick comedy. I was in tears laughing the entire time. So by far and away, the best thing I went to see. I, I went with uh, Medic and a couple of the other guys that work in the production. And incredible. Absolutely one of my favourite things. So highly, highly recommend it. Um, so that was brilliant. And then Fernando's, uh, I love spicy food. Like, no one would expect the big ginger Irish lad to be good with spicy food. But I am love spicy food. So when I was over in Shanghai, I was having a ball. So definitely, for the, I'm the extra hot. I'm like, whatever spice you can give me, slash it on there, I'm going to be delighted. So, yeah, but it's it's been really nice. Um, the spot we're in is gorgeous as well. Um, and even just the getting to experience a lot of the food and stuff here has been really nice. Like, there's a place called Bamboo Mat. It's a Japanese-Peruvian fusion place that's been really, really nice. So there's just been some really cool food spots. Um, and I'm a big foodie, so I'm, I'm happy out from that so, yeah so, sounds amazing <laughs> and talking of locations obviously you're from ireland yeah i was asking raya earlier when are we going to have the next uh, league event in the uk because we've had to wait eight years for this one but obviously there's been a pandemic and brexit in between there so that's understandable and they said you know they're really uh, appreciative of the fans here they love how international yeah. london is and they said you can definitely expect us to be back you know, I'm Esports News UK. I'm not Esports News England. I like to shout about um, the UK and Ireland. What are your views on sort of Irish esports? We've got arenas there, haven't we? Yeah. Dublin. Do you ever yeah. think we'll get more league things there in the future? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd love to have them, especially with like Striker now being set up in Dublin and that kind of stuff. But uh, I think it's very hard. I think just the we're such a small population that trying to get peop enough people to kind of fill a stadium is going to be tough. Unless it's just like, as you can see here, though, like. Half this audience is not from the UK. Like, you hear all the Chinese chants, you hear the Korean chants, you hear Americans are all over the place. Like, there's such a wide variety of people. So, I personally would obviously love to see it. Um, even just getting to casts at home would be amazing. Like, speaking to guys like, you know, Vedius and Medic and what it means to them to be able to deliver a show on home soil. It's meant yeah. the world to them. And even getting to go back and have, like, my mom and dad or my sister, my brother to come and see an event would be absolutely incredible. But um, I think Ireland might be a little bit small <laughs> at this stage. And again, the legal agency just has kind of disappeared in Ireland, which is sadly the case. So I don't know how likely it'd be, but I'm happy to have like the UK at least be that like hop, skip and a jump away. Yeah, so we yeah. still it's it's close enough that I can still get a lot of my, like a lot of my friends that I'd know from back home all came over. So it's been a really cool experience to get to share moments like this with them. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And um, you, you've done a lot, Dagdown, over the over the years in in esports in League of Legends. What's next for you? You've been on the world <laughs> stage. You've done MSI. You've done LPL. You've done yeah. all of these things. Yeah on the LEC as well is it more of the same you want to keep uh, you know being on these big league broadcasts um, to be honest like it's a bit of a weird one because I never really expected to be at all where I was um, so like I <laughs> I used to work at a bank in 2019 I was like cool I have like three or four gigs lined up they offered me redundancy or if I wanted to like keep same with the company I was like I'll take the redundancy I'll give this esports thing a shot and see if it works out three months I was like this is great it's all going fantastic and then immediately had nothing for the rest of the year so I had um, three months left before I'd given myself my time limit of I'm going to step out of esports this just isn't for me I'm not obviously good enough it's not happening so I'll step out um, and then I got very very lucky three months from the end of that timeline that I actually joined the LPL um, and then I moved over to Shanghai in the middle of COVID so it was a bit of a mad one but um yeah, it's kind of been a case of like pushing to see how far I can go with a lot of it and um, I don't think feel like I've done everything that I want to achieve within casting um, but I'm also trying to very much keep an open mind with everything just to see because I, I mean it's such a new space there's so many cool things that are happening so I genuinely don't know but at least for the like foreseeable future for myself I really want to keep pushing myself in the casting just to see how much I can achieve um, and then again just to experience everything that there is because the fact that I get to travel to such cool spots and experience all the things that there is like there's very few jobs that allow you to well shout like an idiot at a computer screen <laughs> I also get to experience really cool cultures and food and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Dagda, thanks very much for talking to me. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, just to say thank you to the fans. Like Genuinely, like being in the LPL, you are very, very separated from everyone. Um, and I know Munch has experienced this at this event as well. Yeah. But seeing the outpour of like love and excitement that people have when you actually get to some of these big events and when you pe people come up and say hi and thank you, it genuinely means the world because um, we don't really get to see it very often. So just massive, massive thank you to everyone who came up or sent lovely messages because uh, I read them all and like 
I get a little bit of bullshit, but like genuinely, it, it means so, so much. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Dagdo, you <laughs> pleasure talking to you. Good luck for the future. Thanks, everyone, for watching. This has been Dom from Esports News UK, content at uh, MSI powered by SideQuest Gamers Hub. I'll see you in the next one. No losses, I don't do like both. A few screws loose in the head, I'm a psycho. Promise you the bar, this is really the bite though. Careful not to get too close, I might just go.